has expanded over the years, attracting fans of comic books, movies, and everything pop culture related. Joining me now to share more on the event itself is Comic-Con co-founder Mike Towery. Hi, Mike. Good morning. Hi, good morning. So take me back. I believe you were 14 years old in 1970? Uh, well, 1969, we okay. started working on, on Comic-Con and... and uh, uh, somebody who had worked on conventions back in Detroit um, moved to San Diego and was interested in doing something similar here and contacted some of us comic fans and and um, so we all got together there were six of us a 12 year old there were four of us were teenagers yeah. and then the guy from Detroit was a 35 and unemployed graphic artist so <laughs> it didn't it didn't seem real uh, promising when we started but it turned out pretty great so who called you how, how, who was the one who said hey Mike you should be involved in this well the 12 year old named Barry Alfonso put yeah. a, a free ad in a local um, classified like a penny saver kind yeah. of thing wanting to buy comics and so this guy Sheldor from Detroit called him up because he had some comics to sell and then Barry, when he went over there, said, well, gee, you know, I'm just a kid. I don't have money to buy everything. But there's this guy, Richard Alf, who just started advertising in Marvel. He'd probably buy them. And so <clears throat> Shell got a hold of Richard, and Richard was a friend of mine. We were both selling, buying and selling comics. And so Shell pitched it to Richard, the idea, you know, would we be interested in doing a convention in San Diego? And so Richard said, well, maybe I'll talk to some of my friends. So, so uh, we all got together, uh, myself, um, Richard, Bob Sork, another friend in comics, we all lived in the uh, Mission Village, Sara Mesa area. Yeah. And then Barry Alfonso, his mom brought him over because he was 12 and couldn't drive or anything. And, <laughs> right. And, and then a, a customer of Richard's who was a fan artist from uh, San Marcos uh, drove down. And, and so we got together and talked about it for a, a couple of times and decided, yeah, this is something we want to do. And so the first one, 1970, mm. I believe it was at the, what, the U.S. Grant in the basement? Is yeah. that, that's the rumor, right? Yeah, the base. I, I, I don't know if it's literally the basement, but it was down there, <laughs> out of the way. And yeah. so the deal was, uh, it was a trial run for a one-day thing, and they let us uh, have the facility for free if we then contracted to have the full three-day event later that year in August. So that's what we did. We had a one-day, we called it the Minicon, um, in, in uh, March of 1970, and then we had our big, as we saw it, convention in August of 1970, and, and we had, uh, that one, we had maybe 300 people, but that seemed huge to us. Yeah, that was huge, and, and I mean, at the time, when you're talking about the first time that people had ever heard of it to attract 300 people, so you knew that there was a little bit of a market interest mm -hmm. in people meeting at the time, I mean, it was very grassroots. You were really meeting the artists behind comic books, right? We did. We, In fact, it, it turned out it was really fortuitous for Comic-Con because that same year, 1969, Jack Kirby, the creator of Captain America, mm -hmm. Thor, Iron Man, the Avengers, all these classic X-Men, classic characters, um, was the first big comic artist to move from New York out to Southern California. He moved uh, initially to Irvine and so um, we were able to arrange to go up and meet him, which was fantastic because yeah. we, we had no idea that it was even possible to meet someone like him. And we really revered these people who could do, you know, what he did. And so he came to the first three-day convention in 1970, the, you know, the number one comic artist probably in history. Yeah. And then we also had Ray Bradbury, the number one science fiction author came down, and he was a wonderful person, and he came down from Los Angeles. So our little group of uh, 300 attendees in the U.S. Grant Hotel had the top people in science fiction wow. and comics there. And now, I, I'm sure, I mean, is it kind of like, do you just pinch yourself when you look at the, you think about those days, I'm sure it feels like mm -hmm. yesterday, and now you look at the size and the scale as it takes over downtown. Oh yeah, there's no we would we there's no way we could have imagined that that would happen because when we started it we had conventions were for nerdy people who um, liked stuff that nobody else liked and kind of looked down on so it was our chance to get together and be normal for a weekend with people who liked the same things that we did um, so yeah the idea that it would become so big and mainstream um, we would but Jack Kirby actually he said like prophesied he says you know one day Hollywood is going to come to Comic-Con 
um, to tell people what they're doing and get ideas for their next movies, and and that's what's going to happen. And people are like, sure, Jack, yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> and lo and behold, right now, right. tell me what you talked about meeting some of your favorite authors and some of these people. What, what is there one memory that sticks out to you that you go, man, that was really cool. When I think about those beginning days of Comic Con, that's what I really enjoyed. Well, getting getting to. Uh, uh, everybody, ooh, the kids, we all chipped in our money to rent a station wagon, and we piled in and drove up to visit Jack Kirby in Irvine. He had just moved there, and his wife, Roz, made us hamburgers, and we sat around, and he regaled us for hours with, um, you know, stories of, I'm sorry. Somebody must be watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, regaled us for hours with stories of doing comics yeah. and showed us art that nobody had seen before, things he had done when he was a kid himself. Wow. And, and stuff that he was working on. And he was just the most wonderful person. And for us, it was just fantastic to be able to meet this, to meet him. Yeah. Now, I see you have the Batman shirt on. I do. I'm sure you still own some comics. What is, give me, give me your favorite three comics of all time. Oh, gee. Um, well, Fantastic Four, number five. My absolute favorite. Um, that was the first Marvel comic. I used to be a DC collector. Yeah. And then um, I went door to door in my neighborhood asking people if they had any old comics they wanted to sell. And somebody, a door I knocked on, a kid goes, well, I got this one here. So he sold me this copy of Fantastic Four number five. For how much? For 25 cents. <laughs> and it was the first <laughs> appearance of Doctor Doom, yeah. who was like the classic villain for Fantastic Four. And it was a great story. And after that, I was sold on Marvel. And so that was, you know, that was really it for me. How much is that comic worth today? Oh, depending on the condition it's in, it's thousands of dollars. That's insane. Yeah. Well, what it has grown so much. Very nice to meet you. Like I said, it holds a special place in my heart because my husband and I yeah. met through Comic-Con, and I'm sure that you hear stories like that all the time, the people who have attended and grown through Comic-Con. So it was a pleasure yeah. to meet you and have oh. you in studio today. All right, thank you. All right. Well, coming up on Good Morning San Diego, the tradition of jumping off of the OB 